Officially hydraulic fracturing, fracking is used all over the world to recover natural gas from deep within the Earth's crust. The very same natural gas that is currently fueling the world's hunger for power, yet it has unknown health implications. It also has the idea that fracking has become a thing to try and keep the dependency on fossil fuels over the use of renewable sources. So what is it? How does it work? And what implications does it have? Well sit back dear viewer, let me tell you. The modern world requires electricity. Now most of the world's supply is produced by burning fossil fuels such as coal, gas and oil. Fracking is a way of getting gas out of the hard to reach places. It wasn't viable for a long time as simpler methods to get the easy to reach gas out were used. But all the easy supplies have been used up and now we need to get more creative. And so, as the price of gas increased, the opportunity for fracking presented itself. The basic idea is that you drill into the ground and you pump a mixture of water, sand and chemicals at a high pressure into the hole. This fractures a rock causing loads of tiny cracks. The sand in the mixture holds the cracks open and the gas is absorbed by the water. Then it is pumped out and the gas is retrieved. They, by which I mean the fracking companies, will generally use about 8 million litres of water. That is enough for 65,000 people for a day, several tonnes of sand and 200,000 litres of chemicals. Now they are not required to tell anyone what these chemicals are, but we know that there are up to 700 different chemicals that they can use some of which we've been able to find out, such as, but not exclusive to, radium, which is radioactive, uranium, which is radioactive too, lead, ethylene glycol, aka antifreeze, formaldehyde, which is a preservative, benzene, which is in crude oil, formic acid, which is an antibacterial chemical, methanol, which is used in many things, such as antifreeze fuel and as a solvent, and hydrochloric acid. However, as I said, most of them are unknown. To look at it in detail, once the site is chosen by a geologist and the rig is constructed, all the materials have to be brought onto the location. It's about 400 tankers of water, a few trucks of sand, and many tankers of chemicals. Once everything is in place, it takes a huge amount of power while they drill down into the deep rock. Once they have reached the rock, which tends to be sedimentary, they dig horizontally along so they can get the best surface area for fracturing. Now it is time to pump the mixture into the hole at high pressure and fracture the rock. The methane is absorbed into liquid and then it is removed to retrieve the methane. This happens with a 3% loss rate of the methane. And once they have depleted the gas site, they pump the mixture back into the ground and seal the hole and then move on to the next site. This obviously comes with health implications. Most notable is the contamination of the water table. First of all, it requires a lot of water to even do this. This water is then not reusable, so it needs to be done every time. After it is pumped back into the ground, it can leak out and find its way into the water table, for which it can contaminate water sources. The chemicals in the mixture are so integrated into the water that they can't be removed by a treatment plant, so once the source is contaminated, it's gone for good. Some of the chemicals that are known are hazardous, and some are even highly toxic which if it ended on your skin will cause some serious damage, never mind if you actually drank it. The concerning thing is that the threat is actually known, however there are nearly no effort to stopping it, as the companies say that if done properly there shouldn't be any contamination anyway. Except studies have shown that methane in the water near a plant is seven times the normal level. In the US, some of its water sources are actually now unusable because of negligence. Without any long-term investigation into results of long exposure to these chemicals, we can never be sure about what's going to happen to the population. After the medical implications, it then results in greenhouse gas emissions. Gas is not as bad compared to coal when it comes to releasing greenhouse gases. However, because of the activities like fracking, there are far more gas facilities so the net pollution is higher. Plus the simple fact that it requires a large amount of energy just to drill and run the facilities, which is produced by other fossil fuel plants. Then the sides become quickly depleted and so I have to start the whole process again. It all mounts up. As I said before, when the companies are collecting the gas, there is a 3% loss rate. What they are getting out is the methane, and that is 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Times that by the 2.5 million fracking jobs done across the world, a million of which are in the US. Now that's a lot of methane being released into the air. In the short term, we are looking at lots of cheaper energy for us to live our day-to-day -day lives. However, the long term, we could be looking at health implications and global warming. 
So is it worth it? Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please give it a like. And if you like my drawings or like hearing my voice, hit the subscribe button. Till next time, stay smart.